Long before the world of track and field and the internet was abuzz with chatter about the speed, style, and unapologetic individuality of sprinter Shakari Richardson, there was Florence Griffith Joyner, better known to the world as Flojo. Possessing a combination of sheer talent, unparalleled charisma, and a flair for fashion that transformed her into a household name during the 1980s and early 1990s, Flo Jo's awe-inspiring performances and groundbreaking achievements set her apart as an athlete whose impact would resonate far beyond her time on the track. With her signature long, vibrant nails and eye-catching outfits, she pushed the boundaries of athletic fashion, captivating audiences worldwide with her unmistakable presence. But it was her remarkable athletic prowess that truly distinguished her as an extraordinary talent. During her career, Flojo shattered records and left her competitors in the dust. Her 100-meter and 200-meter world records set in 1988 at the Seoul Olympic Games still stand today, a testament to her unrivaled speed and agility. However, amidst the accolades and awe-inspiring performances, controversy has swirled around her extraordinary achievements, particularly regarding her seemingly untouchable world records. As we delve into the enigmatic life of Florence Griffith Joyner and her world records, we embark on a journey that reveals a captivating blend of skepticism, scrutiny, and enduring admiration for the great Flojo. Born on December 21, 1959, Florence Dolores Griffith, later known as Florence Griffith Joyner or Flojo, grew up in a diverse and vibrant neighborhood of Los Angeles, California. From a young age, she exhibited an affinity for sports, displaying natural athleticism that would eventually propel her to extraordinary heights. Excelling in basketball and track and field, Flo Jo discovered her true calling in sprinting and sprint hurdles, setting the stage for a remarkable journey that would make her a household name. Her emergence as a formidable force in the world of athletics occurred during her college years at California State University, Northridge, and the University of California, Los Angeles. While still in college, she qualified for the 1980 Olympics in the 100-meter event. Although she couldn't compete due to the U.S. boycott of the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan, Four years later, she made her Olympic debut at the 1984 Games in Los Angeles, where she won a silver medal in the 200-meter race. In 1988, during the U.S. Olympic trials, Flo Jo achieved an impressive feat by setting a new world record in the 100-meter sprint. This accomplishment propelled her to the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, South Korea, where she would capture the world's attention with her lightning-fast speed, flamboyant style, and signature one-legged bodysuits. In a stunning display of athletic prowess, she also shattered a nearly decade-old world record in the 200 meters, only to surpass her achievement a mere 100 minutes later in the finals, clocking an astonishing 21.34 seconds. As if that weren't enough, she also contributed to her team's victory in the 4 by 100 meter relay, earning a third gold medal and clinched a silver in the 4 by 400 meter relay. Controversy, however, plagued her remarkable feats. While her 100 meter record boasted a wind reading of 0, 0.0, a nearby triple jump event recorded a gusty 4.3 miles per second and so doubt was cast upon the legitimacy of these world and Olympic records due to the particular wind conditions and the 100-meter record being the largest improvement in the world record time since the advent of electronic timing. As if the wind issue wasn't enough, there were questions about her usage of performance-enhancing drugs following the 1988 Olympic drug scandal. These suspicions were further fueled by her visibly muscular physique which some deemed unnatural for a female sprinter. To make the situation worse, other athletes expressed their disbelief regarding the remarkable improvement shown by Flojo within a short period of time. Before the 1988 track and field season, her personal best in the 100-meter sprint 
was 10.96 seconds, achieved in 1987. However, in 1988, she managed to shave off 0.47 seconds from her previous record. Similarly, Griffith Joyner's best time in the 200 meters before 1988 was 21.96 seconds, also set in 1987. Yet in 1988, she remarkably improved her time by 0.62 seconds, setting a new record of 21.34 seconds that has yet to be surpassed. Flo Jo attributed her transformation to newly implemented training programs and her new coach, her husband, Al Joyner, who'd replaced her former coach, Bob Kersey. The rumors, however, continued to grow. In 1989, a story emerged where Daryl Robinson, a U.S. quarter-mile runner, claimed that he sold her 10 millimeters of growth hormone for $2,000 in 1988. According to Robinson, Flojo told him that investing thousands of dollars would yield a million-dollar return. Robinson also claimed to have received steroids from coach Bob Kersey and witnessed track star Carl Lewis injecting what he believed to be testosterone. But no evidence was provided by Robinson to support his allegations, and it was revealed that he'd been paid $25,000 for the story, leading to his rejection by the athletics community and resulting in the premature end of his career. As the rumors were getting out of hand, sports organizations, including the International Association of Athletics Federations, IAAF, and the United States Anti-Doping Agency, USADA, launched investigations into the allegations surrounding Flojo and her husband. As the investigations progressed, she consistently denied any involvement in doping practices. She maintained that her success was a result of hard work, natural talent, and dedication to her craft. Her former coach, Bob Kersey, said, It has never been proven by anyone that Florence had ever used anything illegal to improve her performance. It has not been proven by anybody that any athlete that I have coached has used any illegal drugs. What has happened, and in a sense I blame myself for allowing it to happen, is that people who are jealous have spread rumors. Nowadays, you don't have to have any facts for someone to print bad things about you. Unfortunately, it's come to a time where athletes and or organizations play the game of tarnishing someone because if they can't beat them and it affects their endorsements and praise, they say, if I can't beat you one way, I'll beat you the other way. If only the factual information was published, the truth would emerge. Florence Griffith Joyner is a world record holder who has consistently performed well. She has trained rigorously, has diligently undergone and volunteered for drug tests, and has unquestionably proven herself as a genuine champion and an exemplary role model. The investigations from the sports organizations proved to be complex and time-consuming, involving extensive testing of samples, interviews with athletes, and scrutiny of medical records. Ultimately, no conclusive evidence was found to directly implicate Flojo in any doping activities. Drug scandals aside, Flojo also received backlash for her sense of fashion. Her flamboyant and unconventional fashion choices truly set her apart. When she stepped onto the track, all eyes were on her, not just for her record-breaking performances, but for her daring outfits and fingernails that seemed to defy gravity themselves. Sporting a kaleidoscope of vibrant colors, Flojo would glide across the track in skin-tight, one-legged unitards, adorned with striking patterns and bedazzled with sequins and feathers. Her flowing nails were like miniature masterpieces, each finger painted with intricate designs that matched her dazzling outfits. It was as if she had taken a trip to the fashion cosmos and returned with the most dazzling ensembles ever seen in the realm of athletics. Naturally, such audacious fashion choices drew both admiration and criticism. Traditionalists in the world of sports couldn't fathom the audacity of Flojo's wardrobe. They questioned whether her extravagant attire distracted from the purity of the sport. Pundits debated, should the focus be on the clock or on her clothes? But Flojo wasn't deterred by their opinions. Her answer was clear, why not both? In 1988, Florence Griffith Joyner accomplished more than she ever imagined. 
being hailed as the Associated Press Female Athlete of the Year, receiving the prestigious Sullivan Award for being the nation's top amateur athlete, and of course, winning three gold medals on the biggest stage for any track and field athlete, the Olympics. After the Olympics, she garnered millions of dollars through endorsement deals, primarily in Japan. Additionally, she secured a partnership with LJN Toys, a toy maker, to create a doll resembling her, similar to the Barbie doll. Apart from her athletic pursuits, she demonstrated her diverse talents by designing basketball uniforms for the Indiana Pacers NBA team in 1989. She also took on the role of co-chair on the President's Council on Physical Fitness. Making appearances beyond the sports world, she guest starred as herself on an episode of the fourth season of the television show 227 and had a role in the soap opera Santa Barbara in 1992, portraying Terry Holloway, a photographer reminiscent of Annie Leibovitz. On November 13, 1990, the Joyner family welcomed a beautiful baby girl named Mary into the world, a name chosen to honor the memory of her husband Al's late mother. Then in 1996, during an interview with Charlie Rose, Flojo announced her return to competitive athletics with a focus on the 400 meters. Her motivation stemmed from already holding world records in the 100 and 200 meter events with the 400 meters world record as her next objectives. She diligently trained leading up to the US Olympics trials in June. However, her aspirations of becoming a triple world record holder were dashed when tendonitis in her right leg forced her to halt her comeback. On September 21, 1998, tragedy struck. Al Joyner stated that on Sunday night, Florence said she was feeling tired and he told her she should go to bed and get some rest. Then in the middle of the night, he woke and found her not breathing. The sudden nature of her death prompted an investigation by the Orange County Sheriff Coroner's Office. On September 22nd, it was determined that she had tragically succumbed to suffocation during a severe epileptic seizure. Further examination revealed that she had been living with a congenital vascular brain anomaly called cavernous hemangioma, which made her prone to seizures. According to a family attorney, she had experienced a tonic-clonic seizure in 1990 and had received treatment for seizures in 1993 and 1994. The sheriff coroner's office reported that at the time of her passing, only trace amounts of two common over-the-counter medications, antiseidaminophen and the antihistamine Benadryl, were present in her system. In 1995, Flojo was honored with induction into the Hall of Fame of USA Track and Field. And as a testament to her impact and legacy, the 102 Street School in Los Angeles, which she had attended during her childhood, was renamed Florence Griffith Joyner Elementary School in 2000. Furthermore, the city of Mission Viejo paid tribute to her by dedicating a park at the entrance of her neighborhood in her honor. These gestures served as lasting commemorations of her achievements and contributions. Thank you for joining us on this journey to celebrate the life and achievements of Florence Griffith Joyner. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more inspiring content. Your support helps us continue sharing stories of remarkable individuals like Flojo.